What's going on YouTube? This is NecroStevo and we're finally here with week three of the Eternity City Enders versus the Portland Timbers. Of course, Portland Timbers are coached by RTK and if you have not seen my team analysis for this, feel free to check it out. It will be in the same playlist as this video. And I've also left RTK and the Pokemon Premier League links in the description as well. Now going into this, I had drafted uh, Kafagrigus kind of as a switch out for Talonflame, and that proved to be a good matchup overall. I did decide to stick with Kafagrigus and um, Forges as kind of my defensive core. I did switch up some of the EVs on Forges right before the battle and enough to outspeed kind of common Metagross sets while still having a modest chance to live uh, a hit like a Meteor Mash or something like that. Also on Reuniclus, I switched the item. It's still max HP, max defense, but I decided to go with Key Berry as the held item. Um, since his team didn't really have a great way of dealing with Reuniclus, and if I had a plus defense uh, on top of the bold nature, I would be able to be pretty comfortably take any hits from anything. I was worried about Melodic's ability to phase, and of course, if something like Sylveon had choice specs, it could kind of rip my team apart. So the opening strategy here, of course, was still to stick with Toxic Spikes in the beginning, and then from there, just trying to punch holes until Noivern or Lopunny could clean up, or until Reuniclus or Sil or uh, excuse me, Reuniclus or Florges could set up. Uh, Florges, of course, has the Calm Mind Synthesis set with Moonblast and Aromatherapy, Life Orb, Noivern, Expert Belt, Toxicroak, and uh, High Jump Kick, Substitute, Return, um, Lopunny. So. Pretty, pretty interesting sets overall there. I wasn't surprised to see what he actually brought to the battle. I did definitely expect either Metagross or Excadrill. I was hoping that he didn't bring Latios, and I was also hoping that he wouldn't bring Melodic because I decided against bringing Levani just because of Levani's bad matchup against so many of his teammates. Uh, this was a good week in particular to have um, dropped Talonflame. While Talonflame does have an amazing presence, it really loses out against Rotom Heat. Um, and since he does decide to start off with it, this is a great opportunity to just go right for my Toxic Spikes. Um, he does hit me with Volt Switch, and seeing that damage, I figured that he's Scarf because I have no special defense investment at all. And if he were Specs or anything more powerful, he would have done a little bit more. And if he were more bulky, of course, I think he would have done considerably less. And right here, if he were Specs, uh, Sylveon, or even Life Warp Sylveon, he would have knocked me out. But since he was unable to knock me out, I know this is some type of defensive Sylveon. And based on his team structure, maybe even a defensive Sylveon, uh, I really wanted to bring a calm Kafagrigus to this battle, but I didn't have time to breed it uh, before the match. And here I brought in Toxicroak just to force him out. I knew he'd probably switch out into Hitmontop, but I decided to take that opportunity to go for Swords Dance because a Swords Dance Gunk Shot is going to be enough to finish off Hitmontop. He does get Intimidate on me, and depending on his spread, a Gunk Shot could still one hit KO him, especially after uh, Toxic Damage, but I miss the Gunk Shot and that means he's able to spin away the Toxic Spikes. And that means Kafagrigus kind of died and, well he's already a Ghost type so he didn't really die in vain, but he was KO'd in vain. Uh, here I just went for Gunk Shot again, I figured, okay it's pretty obvious to switch in Metagross but maybe he'll do something weird and, and try to predict me. Uh, he gets Metagross in for free when I could have just Drain Punch, and then I fail the Sucker Punch because he gets up his Stealth Rocks for free too. So just two really poor turns there. I lost a lot of my momentum from getting up those Toxic Spikes early on. Fortunately, I get a little bit of hacks in my favor as he misses the Zen Headbutt. And we play this 50-50 game for a while, trying to guess whether or not, oh, are you going to attack now or are you going to Stealth Rock? And I just decided to go out into Reuniclus hoping that he would use Zen Headbutt. And even better, he hits me with Bullet Punch, which will do even less damage. Uh, I'm able to activate my key berry, which means I effectively wall Metagross, and also I'm able to get up a Calm Mind as he switches. Now since Sylveon is a more defensive set, it won't be able to threaten me out like it would if he had the, the pure power of Choice Specs Pixelate Hyper Voice. Um, he does have Calm Mind of his own though, but I'm a step ahead of him now that I have two Calm Minds and he doesn't have any. Furthermore, even if he does have Calm Mind, he's unable to hit me on the physical side like I can hit him on the physical side with Psy Shock. So I'm going to be able to go recover up here, and this whole time I was really worried about him critical hitting me, because I just, I saw it coming, it was written in the stars like freaking Gurren Lagann, I was like, please don't crit me, please don't crit me, please don't crit me, 
Unfortunately, I don't, I don't get crit. He does get up a Calm Mind though, which means he's going to do a little bit more damage with his next Hyper Voice. But I can also very comfortably two hit KO him with the Psy Shock from this range. And that's the range that I wanted to get into, where I would be able to do that. Unfortunately, since I am max HP, max defense, I'm not going to be able to one hit KO his Latios with Shadow Ball. But because of that same HP investment I'm in, I'm going to be able to live several Shadow Balls. So no reason here to just not go for the safe recover. And I didn't want to mess around with trying to set up on Latios. Uh, it could have had something weird like Memento or, or Trick. I didn't know what it had until after it used Shadow Ball. And so I just wanted to make sure he had some Life Orb recoil. Then I take him out with Reuniclus with my own Shadow Ball. Now here Rotom comes in and seriously surprises me with Dark Pulse. And that was good planning on his part to carry Dark Pulse just in case I brought Reuniclus. Uh, Dark Pulse is not going to do very much damage, but since he's Scarf, he has the ever-present threat to flinch me. And I really thought a plus two Psy Shock would be able to take him out, but he just barely lives. And as I go for recover on the next turn, he picks up the flinch. And that means Reuniclus is done sweeping this game. I didn't want it to go down just yet. I figured if I had an opportunity, I could switch it in as Deathwater. And I had an easy switch into the Dark Pulse here as well. I also could have gone into Toxicroak, but uh, I really didn't want to play the 50-50 game with Metagross coming in either. Now with Noivern, I decided just to go for Flamethrower because I knew that that would KO the Rotom from that range because he's not bulky. And since he brought in Melodic, I knew there was a real chance that he would either have Miracle or Ice Beam. And I just wanted to put some serious damage on with Draco Meteor, but I miss. I would have been so much better if I had hit that Draco Meteor. Because a Draco Meteor combined with Lopunny Side Jump Kick is enough to easily finish off Melodic. But now that Melodic is basically back at full HP and I've lost my Noivern, I don't have anything to show for it. And now I have to play around with Scald Burns on my Mega Lopunny. I did not carry Fake Out on this Lopunny for this week, so I just went straight for a Substitute. I was hoping that he would try to status me or maybe even switch out, but he just goes straight for Scald. Um, I just thought that the switch into Toxicroak was really obvious, and I didn't want him to go for a secondary coverage move to hit Toxicroak. And so I just stayed in and went for High Jump Kick. Fantastic damage, especially against what's probably a max HP, max defense lop honey, uh, but not enough, and he also burns me for my trouble. So really, really annoying there. I've lost a ton of momentum at this point. The Hex is really kicking my butt, and at this point in the battle, I started to get a little bit frustrated, just because it's like, I I feel like I was playing well, but the Hex is not letting me accomplish what I want to do. But what's important, though, is that I kind of I, I kind of took a minute in between turns, and of course you can't see that in the recording, Took a minute, kind of got reset a little bit. Went on in the floor just because, seeing his moveset now, I don't think he can touch me. Um, at this point, I didn't know that he had Toxic, of course, on his Melodic. But even if he had Dragon Tail or something like that, it wouldn't do anything to my floor just. I decided to go straight for Moonblast in case he did decide to switch out. Um, I wanted to force him to recover if he decided to stay in. He brings in Metagross, and I'm just going to go ahead and sacrifice my Reuniclus here. You get a free switch. Um, I'm going to need to take off some more HP from Metagross before I'm able to handle it, and who better to do that than Toxicroak? Unfortunately, while I do guess the Sucker Punch hit correctly here as he attacks, I don't do enough damage. I need a Life Orb to KO him from that range because he is max HP, max defense, impish nature. He took that super effective hit very well, even with the Expert Belt. Um, he also has Bullet Punch, so I'm not going to be able to finish him off with Law Punny. Here I kind of just clicked a return because I expected him to bullet punch, but I didn't see a reason to go for a high jump kick in case he had protect. Uh, I figured he would protect and then I'd die from the burn or something, I don't know. And of course Metagross can't have protect because his moves were Meteor Mash, Zen Headbutt, Bullet Punch, and uh, Stealth Rock. But again, just, just kind of that weird mindset there in the end of the match. Now here we have an opportunity. My only other remaining Pokemon at this point is really my Forges. He has the Metagross, the Melodic, Hitmontop, and a very low HP Rotom all left. Forges is my last Pokemon, and if I'm going to win this, I'm going to need to be able to set up at least three Calm Minds, and at the same time stay healthy enough to possibly take a Meteor Mash. Now what I did not know at the time is that um, my Forges does outspeed his version of Metagross. Uh, so, he could switch it in at any point, but he's also risking getting 2 hit KO'd by Moonblast because I outspeed him. 
So I was hoping to at least bait him into staying in for a little while. Uh, I did need to stay relatively healthy. He gets a critical hit there as I heal the Toxic. And basically after three, thir three turns, excuse me, Toxic starts to out damage Poison. So every two, maybe sometimes even on the first turn after Poison, I started trying to heal it with Aromatherapy. Uh, I was very happy that I took the time after putting Forges' new EVs and training it. I took the time to PP up on everything because I definitely needed it on Synthesis and Aromatherapy in this battle. Uh, I was very relieved to see Toxic actually because the other alternative would be that he had Mirror Coat and that would spell extremely bad news bears for Forges. So in this situation, I'm going to be able to set up on his Melodic a good bit and as he brings in the Metagross, I went for Synthesis to put myself at a higher HP level to help me live a Meteor Mash. Um, and then here's where I cross my fingers going, please outspeed Metagross. And I do, because like I said, he's max HP, max defense. Um, and so I'm able to knock out Metagross, which is fantastic. Now we have a real shot at victory, as long as I'm able to keep the poison damage to a minimum. Um, if it gets too low, then I really start playing games with him getting a critical hit. Um, I was also worried about him on top carrying random steel type coverage with bullet punch or something like that. Granted, it wouldn't do that much damage just because it's such a weak move and it's not stab, but why why play around with that at all? Now he does go for fake out, which forces me to take another turn of toxic damage. And that's a little bit scary. I thought he would actually go for fake out and then switch out and then go for fake out and then switch out, which forces me to take extra residual damage over time. So that made my first priority getting rid of the toxic as opposed to just going for Moonblast to KO the Hitmontop. Um, so I got rid of Toxic, now I can even go for Synthesis, and he can't really do anything about it. Um, he can bring back out his Melodic, but now I'll be back at full HP. Um, I'm going to speed this up because this is a heck of a Stell War with Melodic here. It's basically this big war of attrition between him trying to get the crits he needs and whittle me down. At the same time, I'm trying to accrue enough Calm Mind Boost to 2 hit KO Melodic without having my HP be too low in the process. So there is a, uh, and there's not really too much of the mind game here because I could heal Toxic earlier or later depending on when I'm, if I'm expecting him to recover his HP. Um, as, assuming he has PP maxed out his stuff, he has quite a few recovers he can use. He has 16, but I have 24 Moonblast. So generally I'm going to win that war, but at the same token he starts switching up and going for Ice Beam trying to freeze me. So I was just going, please don't get frozen, because all you need to do is get frozen and then take a couple of crit hits or something weird. And then he does freeze me, and I stay frozen for a little while, actually. I think it's two or three turns that I stay frozen. And so he's able to switch out here, go back out into Hitmon top. I am really happy that uh, Kofagrigus put up those toxic spikes earlier, because I haven't actually attacked Hitmon top. I missed the gunk shot on it earlier. Um, and otherwise, all that damage that is taken has been from poison. So I do thaw out and I take out the hit on top. Rotom comes out, but with this many Calm Mind boosts that I've accrued, he's not going to be able to do anything even with Overheat. And so I'm able to finish off Rotom, and then we're just back to Florges and Melodic once again. So here he just goes straight for Ice Beam, trying to freeze me one more time, and he doesn't get the freeze, thank goodness. And I'm able to finish him off with a final Moonblast. So finally, the Eternity Enders pick up another win. The MVP there was definitely Florges into uh, kind of a secondary MVP was Reuniclus there. They were doing really, really well despite the hacks that they encountered. And I was just, I was really dreading that matchup because RTK, of course, pretty good player. And he had a fantastic win record on his belt at that point. So um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's matchup. We're gonna go pour one out for the Eternity Enders. And next week, the Enders are going to go up against the uh, Bayern Munich. So that's going to be a pretty interesting match, as that team is a powerful one. So be on the lookout for the team analysis going up next week. And in the meantime, I hope you guys have a good weekend. See you later, guys.